Hi guys, it's hate doing this intro. Hi guys, it's Lauren. Right off the bat, this is my editing Instagram and you should go follow it if you don't already. So today I want to walk you guys through the most frequently asked After Effects questions. These are all over my comments and I thought, well, rather than responding to each person one by one, I might as well just make a video about it. Y'all are probably like, we don't care. Show us how to make a cube. But I promise that video will get to you guys. Let me stop rambling and get into the video. So a lot of you guys ask me, how do I line up my clips to hit each beat? And I honestly wish I had a better answer for this. So in After Effects, I'm aware that there's a beat tracker where it basically marks each beat so you can cut your clips accordingly, but I actually don't make the bases of my edits on After Effects. I make them on Final Cut Pro. I put all the clips together and then save it as one video and then drag it back into After Effects and cut it into individual segments. I'll just give you an example of what a base is and what the finished product is. Because you're beautiful. Friends. Friends. Because you're beautiful. Friends. Friends. But that's my recent edit. You should go watch it because I pulled an all nighter to finish it. My work ethic. So that's how I make my bases. And in regards to how I make sure to hit each beat, I just like listen. <laughs> like, I don't use any like beat trackers or anything. I just like line it up to where I think it hits the beat. But yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of beat tracking tutorials on YouTube. I'm just not the person to come to about that. Next question plugins. I get so many questions about how do you download plugins? Are they free? Like, I don't want to pay. I'm poor. This necklace was $3. Like, I understand. The most popular plugins that you guys ask about are Sapphire, Twixter, and Magic Bullet looks. Sapphire is for the blur mode curves, which is basically the really smooth transform. And there's a ton of other things too. There's flashes, animation, backgrounds, all that stuff. And then Twixter is slow motion. Magic Bullet looks is for the colorings. As far as I'm concerned, you're not gonna find any of these online for free unless you look really hard, but then you're risking getting a virus on your computer, which I don't recommend because you can't edit with a virus. It'll be like, <laughs> You know, so the sad truth is, yes, you probably have to pay for these plugins. And a lot of you guys were also asking, well, what is a plugin? Basically, a plugin is an effect that does not come with After Effects. It has to be bought separately and then imported into After Effects. So if I were to buy After Effects 2020 right now, it would not come with Sapphire, Twixter, Magic Bullet looks. It would just come in with the built-in stuff like motion tile, brightness and contrast, etc. For me, at least, these plugins are very essential. There are effects that you can use in place. Also, I want to distinguish the difference between a plugin and a preset. So as I mentioned, a plugin you have to pay for and put it into After Effects yourself. But a preset is basically a user-made sequence of keyframes or a user-made animation. And basically you can save it as a file and send it to other people. And then they can import that sequence of keyframes or whatever it is into their After Effects. And this is completely free. For example, let's say I want to save my zoom in transition for myself and for others. I would add the keyframes. Then I'd highlight them and save it as an animation preset. And then it shows up in my effects and presets under whatever name that I named it. I can also export that preset as a file and send it to other people. I got a lot of questions about rendering. I don't want to make a separate video on that because it's so simple. So I'm just going to show you how I render right now. Okay, so you're going to go up to composition and add to render queue. You're gonna click on lossless and then click on format options and go to animation and change it to H.264. Where it says not yet specified, just change it to whatever name you want it to be. Then just simply click on the render button. Then just search for this file in your finder and you should find it easily. Oh, graphs. There's been a lot of questions about graphs, especially on my last video. A lot of you had questions like, oh, I go to my graph editor and my graph is not showing up. I'm gonna show a demo, but you have to be clicked on at least one of the keyframes that's a part of that transition in order for the graph to appear. So if you're not clicked on any keyframes and you go to your graph editor, nothing will show up. I also got a lot of questions about easy ease and people asking me, oh, like, do you use easy ease? The purpose of easy ease is just to shape your graph so that it's easier to manipulate. This is me using easy ease but I can get the same effect in an easier way without having to highlight my keyframes and everything. This is just specifically how I do it. This may seem more time consuming to you, but I've just grown really accustomed to it. Even if you do easy ease, you're going to get the exact same effect. It's just a way to kind of make the template of your graph for your future manipulations, if that makes sense. Difference between speed and value graph. For me, I like using value graph more because I think you can manipulate it in both ways. For speed graph, you, for speed graph, you basically move the knobs along one horizontal axis, but there's more opportunity for movement and adjustment in value graph and kind of move those according to each other. Other. But at the end of the day, you can get the exact same effect as if you were using value graph than if you were using speed graph. Actually, I'll show you right now. This is my value graph. And if I go to speed graph, it shows you the speed graph equivalent of that value graph. It's the same exact graph, just in a different form. Also, I'm low-key insecure on how I pronounce graph because I kind of pronounce it graph. Graph. So there's just a lot more. <laughs> Who are the police after? Who? 
when I started out After Effects for like the first year and a half, I only used Speedgraph. And I think my edits look a lot better with value. Playback time. So a lot of you commented like, oh my God, my audio is so low pitched. It's not playing back or, oh, it's playing back with like a weird muffled voice. <sighs> To answer your question, there is nothing wrong with your edit at all. Since you're adding so many different components, you're adding your keyframes and your effects probably. After Effects can't play that all back like right after you do it. It needs some time to render the frame. So when you play back, it's going to be really slowed down because it just needs that time to render. Oh, another thing about graphs. Someone said, my graph is upside down. It's okay if your graph is upside down. Graphs can be both right side up and upside down. What is pre-composition? I'm so bad at explaining this. I get it, but it's, it's one of those things that you can't really verbalize. In my most recent video, I was pre -composition composing a ton and you may be thinking Lauren why are you pre-composing every five seconds like it's the same video it just changes the clip a different color like but I promise you every single time I pre-composed was necessary so basically with pre-composition you are composing multiple clips um, maybe a text layer and a video layer and you're composing that into one clip so that you can manipulate both together here's an example of when I would need to pre-compose I have my video and my text layer and I want them both to do a zoom in transition so you just pre-compose them and they act as one you will also see me pre-composing when I have Twixter on a clip and I need to add a mask. Because for some reason, you can't add a mask if Twixter is applied to the clip. Oh, I have this really good analogy, or it may be an awful analogy, but I like to use it. This is the A push time period. Mm -hmm. Guys, pray for my thigh. Okay, so I have these two pieces of paper and I want them to go on the exact same path. So I'm just gonna throw them in what I think is the same path. As you can see, they did not go in the same path because they're separate from each other and there's air resistance. And So what's the solution? How can we make these two pieces of paper move along the same path? How about a folder? This folder is going to be the pre-composition in this scenario. Two clips, not pre-composed. Gonna pre-compose them. This is so stupid, I feel like a teacher. Now this is the new pre-composed clip. So I'm gonna throw it. Oh God, I don't wanna like hit my camera. Anyway, so even though you couldn't see it, you know those two pieces of paper inside are moving along the same path because they're within that folder. So that's the same concept of two different clips being inside one pre-composed clip. Although you can manipulate the pre-composed clip, the two clips inside are not manipulated since they are inside the pre-composed clip. I hope that helped, that was kind of lame, I'm sorry. A lot of people ask what computer I use. I use a MacBook Pro. I got it in 2016 and it's now 2020, obviously. It's working fine. The only problem I have is with storage. One terabyte hard drive. This is where I keep my Riverdale episodes or movies or whatever. I have 100 gigabytes of storage and 82 gigabytes are taken up by systems. I don't know what that is, but I'm constantly out of storage. Please help, I use Blurmo Curves and it won't export. It says there was an error and then when it exports, it's just a small part of the clip. I've tried closing it and opening it and it won't work. So I don't know exactly your problem. I would have to see the exact like error code, but a lot of the time Blurmo Curves will just stop rendering and that's because it just takes up a lot of memory. So what I recommend is saving a copy of your project file, getting rid of all the clips that you've already rendered and then just try rendering that one portion. Oh, and this is also a very, very important thing. I showed this in my last video, but it may have been like overlooked because I was doing a million other things too. So with the effect warp, when you add warp, your video may look something like this and that's very ugly. And that is because if there is motion tile on your clip and you add warp, it's going to look like this. After you add motion tile and do your transition, you probably zoom out, pre-compose it, pre-compose with the folder and the paper and the physics, and then add your warp. I hope this video was helpful. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to DM me on Instagram. I'm low-key awful at responding, so I hope I answered a lot of your questions today. Look out for more tutorials. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and bye.